Welcome to Another Night in the NBA. This is your 10-minute recap of the last night of NBA hoops, and I thought the main topic for this video was going to be Chris Depp's Porzingis, because he was great in his opener for the Celtics. I believe he had 30 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 blocks. KP was awesome. He completely changed the way the Celtics were playing, and I was pretty confident that was going to be the main theme for today's video. Uh, but then Cam Thomas went off with a master class. So I want to talk about Cam. This is a Cam video, most and foremost, before we get to the other games later we're going to talk about all the other games this is a recap so we'll get into those as well uh but cam thomas amazing tonight 36 points in total uh played a big part in the nets even being in the game that they were in although they did end up losing so i'm watching this celtics game it's my main game i have on right porzingis is cooking early on but i get this notification i don't know maybe it's like the second quarter of the celtics game that cam thomas finished the first quarter with 15 points and i said to myself oh cam is cooking nice little stretch to start the game to start the season i love to see that uh but after the second quarter he enters the 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 halftime with 24 points and all of a sudden i'm looking at this he's on pace to score 40 points again for the fifth time in about eight months cam thomas's scoring has been absurd so i want to check in watch him see, score 40 again because there was that point last season right where he scored 40 in three straight games then the coach basically benched him for whatever reason after that it seemed kind of political off-course stuff to me uh, but then in the last game of last season scores 40 points as well and then I thought he was going to do it in the opener. So I check in. I put that on the side. You know, I'll watch Cam a little bit. Doesn't start the second half for the Nets, but comes in in the third quarter, immediately starts, you know, being on fire again. It's very hard to do this. You don't see guys come off the bench and be scorers like that. If they're going to score, it, it's usually with they get in rhythm. They got some time out there, but Cam just enters the game and is a bucket immediately. I think it's going to be the title today. Cam Thomas is the definition of a walking bucket he just is he ends the third quarter with 33 points and i say oh he's really on pace to do it again he's gonna hit 40 and it, it's just absurd so you know I, i'm i'm hyped into it you know three points in the fourth quarter ends with 36 and a lot of people are kind of critical because i don't know people don't like cam or something uh, after the the game ended because he took the last shot what was essentially the last shot that could have won them the game it was a step back three but he missed so a lot of people are saying cam thomas isn't a winning player he doesn't do this yada 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 but if we're being honest i'm being honest what lost him this game is that jacques vaughn pulled cam for eight or nine minutes in the fourth quarter he only ended up playing like three or four minutes in the fourth altogether and he was the best offensive player today in the game altogether obviously but despite that Jacques Vaughn still pulled him out it's pretty clear he doesn't really like cam that much uh we've seen that last season as well but whether Jacques likes it or not I think it's pretty clear cam is the future of this Nets team he's one of the best scorers in the league right now he's one of the best young scorers whenever he gets minutes he scores in bunch is almost had his fifth 40 point game like i said has four for his career right now all four of them were last season as a starter he averages like 36 points per game and when he plays over 20 minutes, he averages nearly 30 points per game. So his scoring when he gets actual play time is ridiculous. It's almost unprecedented of how high level of a score he is. We just don't see guys have buckets like this. And tonight in their opener, has now he has the highest scoring opener for a bench player ever. So as a guy who didn't start, his 36 points is the highest ever in a season opener from a player coming off the bench. So really solid game for Cam. Uh, continues to prove himself. I don't know what else he needs to prove to get the respect to probably even start on this team. He should be starting. Uh, I think he's the best offensive player on this team. I don't even think it's really all that debatable. Uh, he's probably not the best all-around player. I think that's probably still Mikael Bridges. And then Nick Claxton probably has a real argument to be a better all-around player than Cam as well. But Cam is right up there. He's really solid. He's only 22, I believe. I saw a tweet today that said he was 21 just last week. So recently turned 22 and is a 
you know, nearly dominant score when given actual play time. And people are going to say, you know, he, he doesn't attribute to winning, but was a plus five today when basically all the starters actually, yes, all the starters were negative in terms of plus minus Nick Claxton minus 12, Dinwiddie minus 10, uh, Ben Simmons minus six, Mikael Bridges minus three, and then Cam Johnson minus one. But Cam Thomas plus five, 36 points and did it efficiently as well, shooting 62% from the field 40 percent from three uh you know he, he just continues to score yes he's one dimensional but he's one of the best scores that we see in, in the game today almost uh bridges ends with 20 points and both of the guys for the Cavs, uh max Struess and donovan mitchell both under 27 good Cavs debut for max Struess. so solid game to him uh but let's just talk about this last sequence here so Donovan Mitchell hits this shot to put the Cavs up one to basically, you know, give them a very high chance of winning this game. Jacques Vaughn calls a timeout, draws up a play. Cam Thomas gets the inbound. There's a screen for McCall going towards the corner, but there is a guy on him. Cam can't get it to him. It's pretty clear it's drawn up for McCall. So Cam kind of has to freestyle on his own. He takes a sidestep three, a shot he hit earlier in the game, misses it, but really good game for cam i don't know how you hold anything against him in this game he was really solid i loved watching it and i think every minute he plays is super exciting is a very much so a difficult shot maker and cam thomas proves once again that he's one of the best players on the nets and he deserves a lot of minutes and is one of the best young talents in the league and i don't even think it's debatable cam thomas is the definition of a walking bucket but now let's take a look let's swing around the league and look at some other games and results from today Okay, so I'm going to try to shoot us around the league here and look at a bunch of different outcomes. I'm going to try to touch on every single game here in about four minutes or less and give you the short recap, you know, the, the highlights from the game, whatever. Uh, so the Celtics, we'll talk about the Celtics game first because like I said, Porzingis was kind of my second choice for today's video. Ended with 30 points, eight rebounds, and four blocks. Great game from Porzingis all around. Clearly made a huge impact on the Celtics. Looks like one of the best pickups of the summer and he was dominant as well as Jason Tatum was very good as well. They are the duo for the Celtics. I think it looks like right now Chris S. Porzingis is kind of clearly the second best player on the Celtics. That's what it looks like, at least from the first game and the preseason we've seen from them so far. 34 for Tatum and 30 for Porzingis. Then you look at the Knicks. Emmanuel quickly had 24 off the bench, and R.J. Barrett was pretty solid as well with 24 points. Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson both struggled, and the Celtics take down the Knicks in the season opener. Then I want to look at the magic game because the magic beat the rockets by 30 points i believe the rockets were favored in this game the magic end up taking it and they win big they win very big and it was kind of a team effort franz wagner had a pretty good game i believe he led them in scoring with 19 uh, I'll pull up the box score. I'll let you know for sure. So Franz Wagner had 19, did not lead them in scoring. That was actually Cole Anthony off the bench with 20. Shout out my podcast mate. He loves Cole Anthony. 20 off the bench, 10 for Markel, Jonathan Isaac with 11, and a, a big defensive play on Jalen Green that he was hyped up about. Uh, Jabari Smith Jr. had 7. Alperin Shengun with 14 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. I'd say he was the best player for the Rockets. So then we look at the Pacers when Winning big 143 to 120 over the Washington Wizards. The Pacers were led in scoring by Bruce Brown with 24, living up to his contract he got this summer. 20 points and 11 assists for Tyrese Halliburton, 18 points for Benedict Matherin. Kind of a, a sharing of scoring for the Pacers as well, and a big win where they put up a lot of points. I don't think people expected uh, the Pacers to be putting up 140, but that could speak more about the Wizards' defense than anything else. Kuzma had 25 for the Wizards led them in scoring Jordan Poole with 18 points but shot just 39% from the field so then we move on to the we can talk about the Hornets game the Hornets beat the Hawks 116 to 110 the Hornets led in scoring I believe by PJ Washington with 25 I talked about PJ I said he's the Hornets hidden star I really like him I think he's going to be great for them this year 24 points for Terry Rozier and pretty solid rookie debut for Brandon Miller with 13 good 
uh, like looked confident with LaMelo Ball. I like the combo. Jalen Johnson had 21 for the Hawks. I really like him as a young guy as well. Very athletic and uh, can rebound really well. So I think he fits. We'll see if he ends up as the starting power forward. 23 for Trey, but the Hornets kind of shockingly take down the Hawks in the debut of the season. Raptors take down the Timberwolves, 97 to 94. Anthony Edwards played all right for the Timberwolves, didn't shoot super well from the field, and didn't get much help outside of that. So the Raptors win their opener, and I think they could be better than people expect this season. The Heat take down the Pistons, but only by one point, 103-102. Heat beat the Pistons. The Heat were led in scoring by Bam at a bio with 22, 19 for Butler, and 16 for Tyler Hero. But then Cade Cunningham, kind of a, a, a breakout I'm back game for Cade Cunningham with 30 points, 17 and 14 for Jalen Duren, really solid double-double, and Asar Thompson had five blocks. I believe I saw something that he was the first rookie to have that many blocks in a season opener, like career opener ever before. The Pelicans, 111 to 104, take down the Grizzlies. Kind of an ugly game all around, but the Pelicans end up pulling it out. You look at the Thunder, winning by 20 over the Bulls, and I think the biggest thing when you're looking at that game is reports came out that uh, the Bulls were kind of yelling at each other in the locker room in game one. Not a great look. And Billy Donovan just kind of left them to their own devices. So not a great look all around for Chicago after one game. 31 for Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Uh, you know, back right to what he was doing before. The Kings take down the Jazz 130-114. to 114, And it was a game that saw 27 first half points from Harrison Barnes that really propelled them to the victory. The Mavericks take down the Spurs in Victor Wembanyama's career debut, where he only I believe it's not six he had six later uh ended up with 15 points for Victor Wembanyama. had a, a kind of quicker scoring spurt in the fourth quarter but had five fouls in, at a point in the third quarter with six points and five fouls uh the fouling was an issue for Wemby but ended up you know finishing okay scoring wise but shot 47 percent no 67% from the field for Wemby and 60% from three, but couldn't really get going because of the foul trouble. 23 for Vas for Vassell and the Mavs take him down. Uh, kind of a, a, a short point here. Derek Lively was great as a rookie big man for the for the uh, the Mavs. 16 and 10 as well as a block. I really like Derek Lively. They're going to have to start him over Kleba or Powell. I think he's the clear guy who should be the starter for them. 33 from Luka, 22 from Kyrie Irving. It was a triple-double for Luka. 33, 13, and 10 as the Mavs win their season opener. And it's going to take a lot from, from Luka on a lot of nights to win games. Uh, and then the last game, the third quarter just ended. I, I, I'm making it a little early here. But the Clippers are up 26 on the Trailblazers. I feel pretty confident that that game is, is pretty much all but over. Uh, the, the Trailblazers have 18 from Anthony Simons. That's the only real notable thing for them. And then the Clippers have 21 from Kawhi, 22 from Paul George, and then 11 points and 10 assists from Russell Westbrook. Really solid balance from their top three guys. But that's going to do it. I think this is more of a 12-minute recap, but there were 12 games tonight, so it's a little tougher. Uh, but thanks for watching. That's going to be it for this night in the NBA, another night in the NBA, day two. So thank you guys for watching. It's going to be it for me you know i'm herm you guys have a good one think about subscribing peace